ready to get started. And want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have some new members from our January meeting. So I want to welcome all new members as well. And we miss seeing everybody in person. It's um, great that we can meet virtually though. And it's so great that our group is staying strong and continuing to support the county. So it's really amazing. Thank you so much. A um, couple of housekeeping items. This is webinar style, so I think you've all figured this out. Everybody's muted, so um, if you have questions, use the chat feature for questions. And I want to thank Ann Glesner and the members who presented nonprofits this quarter, and also the representatives from the nonprofits who handled the Q and A for the video recordings. All of you. Great job. You did a fantastic job creating those videos, enabling us to have them available for our members to view ahead of time and allow us to do our meeting in this way. So thank you so much. And I would like to thank our sponsor, Spot. Uh, Yenny Bexel of Spot has been great from the very beginning. She has been handling um, paying for our administrative costs. So appreciate that, Yanni. She came up to us the first day in, of our um, first meeting and said, what do you need? How can I help? And she has been great ever since. So it allows us to focus on raising money for our community and we really appreciate it. And love your, your store. I'm wearing a top that I got recently and so soft. So anyway, thank you so much, Spot and Yanni. And I want to thank Brett, who's joining us tonight, Brett Baikoy of the Door County Community Foundation. He met with us and we figured, helped us figure out a way that we could do credit card processing. And we're actually doing, they're handling all our payment processing and it's been a huge help for us. It, um, we didn't have that feature before and a lot of people take advantage of it. And you can even get on the website and check the little box and you can, can have a recurring donation subscription so you don't even have to think about it. Your credit card will be charged on the 20th of the month of our meeting and you're all set. So thank you very much, Brett. We really appreciate everything that you're doing. <clears throat> and I wanna start out with our mission statement. Our mission is to connect like-minded women to making a meaningful contribution to our local community. And that's supported by our core values. Uh, community first is a good way to remember it. Um, community, we, that's what we're about. We're supporting our local community. We wanna be flexible. As we've been growing these last two years, things have evolved. And so we've had to be flexible and um, to be able to grow like we have. We wanna be impactful. We're trying to raise a lot of money to support our local community. And we are doing that because we've all come together. We wanna be responsible with the funds that we raise. And simple is just a good reminder because it's really easy for things to get complicated. So it's just a good reminder for us to step back and think about that. And we wanna be transparent to our members and to the community. So our agenda for tonight, we're gonna to hear from Gloria Hack and Mary Beth Hetherington. They're gonna tell us um, about the Door County Medical Center Auxiliary, how they use their funds that uh, they, they were awarded $10,000 July of last year. So we'll hear from them and we're gonna hear from Brett Baikoy next from, for the Door County Emergency Response Fund and also an update on how COVID-19 has been affecting our county. We'll have a, after that, we'll have a 100 plus WWC business update. And then we'll announce the awards and pick our next nonprofits. From here, I guess we're gonna let uh, Gloria and Mary Beth take it on. Hi everyone. Um, I'd like to start out first of all by thanking Gloria for <clears throat> nominating the auxiliary for this award last year. She has a passion and a caring heart for underprivileged people who are in need of dental services and she donates much of her time working in the dental clinic. So it was uh, important and close to her heart. So I very much appreciate that. Um, if you'd go to the next slide, please. So at the July 219 meeting, which seems like a lifetime ago when life was very different, um, 
we uh, were awarded the uh, first prize of $10,000. And uh, we had requested to have that money to use to support the dental clinic's efforts um, to provide dental care to the patients in our skilled nursing facility. Many were not able to receive certain dental services because they might have to be transported over to the dental clinic, which was not part of the facility they were in. Um, or the dentist would have to try to come into the skilled nursing facility to provide some of those services. So there were many things that were significant that people needed that couldn't be provided uh, in that setting. So um, access, cost, and transportation issues were major. Next slide, please. So our goal was to open a, a dental room within the skilled nursing facility. And because when we moved into the new facility, we still had some of the rooms from the old facility that weren't being used for other purposes, we were able to take one of those rooms and turn it into a dental room uh, and use that then for the residents of the skilled nursing facility that um, could not receive those services in the past. We opened that room at the end of 2019 and the room was equipped with all the supplies that were needed, a fixed dental chair, water and suction, and a state-of-the-art x-ray machine. Next slide, please. So Mary Beth, thank you for very much kind words. And for those of you that don't know, Mary Beth is the, uh, was the president of the auxiliary and has been very instrumental in the last year at helping the community in many ways. So the services now that can be provided in the dental clinic, they broke them into two areas. Initially, they wanted to provide dental cleanings. They would do an assessment of the mouth to see how healthy it was. And as we know, a lot of the elderly folks, because of the medication they're taking, they have dry mouth, which creates a lot of issues within the mouth from a gum disease and other um, areas. The second piece is they wanted to provide the fluoride treatments, which would certainly help with the dry mouth. Future services, they actually wanted to get into dental restoration, which is actually cavities, um, root canals, crowns, and those kinds of things. But before we go on to the next slide, I'd like to tell you one thing about one of the residents that are there. Um, I talked to Tanya Fisher, who is the manager of the dental clinic, and I said, can you tell me how the residents are feeling about the new dental services? And she said, it's absolutely unbelievable at how happy they are. She said she spoke to one individual, and this woman was a resident of the skilled nursing facility for five years and was not able to get her teeth cleaned at all during that five years because she was very immobile and not able to be transported to the dental clinic. So now she's been able to have her teeth cleaned. She's on a three-month program because she does have some dental issues. And what she said is, is I now feel like a, a person not just someone sitting in a bed in a skilled nursing facility. So it made such a difference to her just to be able to do something she had done for a number of years before she came into the clinic. So I think that's a great testimonial to what the $10,000 did, at, at least with one person's perspective. Next slide, please. So this is what the new, um, clinic room and the skilled nursing facility looks like, and there's various views there. And as Mary Beth talked about, you can see the dental chair and then the suction machine and hopefully the x-ray machine somewhere. But they also spent quite a bit of time when they put it together and looking at the colors of paint on the wall so it would be pleasing to the residents while they were in the room, as well as various art from the community that are on the wall. So it's really a state of the art and also a beautiful setting for the residents when they come in to have the work done. Next slide, please. Mary Beth and I would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts that you selected last July the Door County Medical Center Auxiliary to receive the award money. You made it possible to put a smile on many of the residents' face in the skilled nursing facility, and we so appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mary Beth and Gloria. Um, we're going to go on to Brett, and I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and unmute Brett and trying to unmute. Okay, Brett, you can take it away. Well, I guess uh, probably the first thing I had to do is apologize. Uh, normally I was, well, I was asked here if I'd like to present some slides that they could put up on the screen. And normally I don't like to use slides because 
uh, that means I have to actually stick to the script. And I like to make things up sometimes in what I'm going to go through. Uh, but I realize now by not providing slides, it means that all of you have to have the entirety of my head filling your screen. So for that, you have my apologies uh, in not providing those slides and, and, and saving you uh, all of that, uh, of that unpleasantness. Uh, I'm here uh, to do two things. The first of which is to say thank you. Uh, many of you have stepped forward and made an additional gift this year uh, through the 100 women, 100 plus women who care uh, into our emergency response fund. Uh, and those monies have been put to very good use. So we deeply appreciate that. Uh, I was asked to talk to you a little bit about uh, what the emergency response fund has been doing over the last number of months. Uh, and, and how it got to be here, as well as give you a little bit of an update on some of the things that we think are going to be uh, issues for us in, in the months to follow. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, uh, the Emergency Response Fund was actually created here at the Community Foundation uh, in response to, I think it was a hurricane in 2012, something in that neighborhood. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a briefing that was done, a study that was done after that giant hurricane on the East Coast as to what was the, the philanthropic response. How did private philanthropy respond to that, in that massive crisis? Uh, and what was clear was that we were woefully underprepared uh, as, a, as a philanthropic community on the East Coast, but that also equally applied to us here in Door County. And while we don't expect a hurricane here, and we certainly didn't expect the pandemic, uh, you know, we do have vulnerabilities, uh, our water in particular. And our concern was what would that mean economically for us if we had a crisis? And so we developed protocols and things that we were going to do in the event of, of a declared crisis. Uh, when our board got together and activated the emergency response fund and pulled the, 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 the book of protocols off the shelf, uh, we did something a little differently though. Uh, we decided to do this in partnership with our friends at the United Way of Door County. Now, we recognize that, that the Community Foundation was going to have to do the heavy lifting financially because United Way needs to focus on its own campaign. Uh, if United Way is not able to be successful this fall with their campaign, that creates additional stresses on our community that we don't need. So we need them to be successful. So while we recognize we might be doing some of the heavy lifting financially, we were going to rely heavily on their expertise in human services. Um, we may have a breadth of relationships uh, that goes to the arts and environment and education, but they have a depth of knowledge in the world of human services. So I would be remiss if I didn't start off at the very beginning to say how much this has been a partnership with the United Way and how much we appreciate all of their, all of their hard work. And while the Community Foundation does not have an annual campaign, United Way does. So I'm going to encourage you all to be generous to United Way come this fall. Uh, when we set up the, the task force to run the Emergency Response Fund, we, we set three priorities. The first one of which was pretty easy, which was to help people who are struggling during the time of the stay-at-home order. Our second priority would be people who are struggling in the period to follow the stay-at-home order, but as a result of the expected recession, largely driven by national issues, as well as a lack of tourists and seasonal residents returning to the county in numbers we would expect. And the third priority would be uh, in, after we've dealt with the human service issue, so this is something quite a bit down the road, that there are important community organizations that are struggling right now and will likely continue to struggle throughout uh, the remainder of this year and probably into next season. Uh, if monies are available later into the winter and into the spring, our hope is that we'll be able to look at some of those key community organizations who haven't had a season this year and, and see what we can do to strengthen them because they help bring people here to drive our economy. Uh, thus far, we've raised about $800,000 in contributions for our emergency response fund. Um, to give you an idea of scope and scale on a per capita basis, that makes it uh, certainly one of the largest funds of its type in Wisconsin, if not the largest fund of its type on a per capita basis when you consider the size of our community. Um, we've committed to being fully transparent. So if you go to uh, responddoorcounty.org, you can find a listing of all of the things that we did and are continuing to do. Um, during that first priority stage, during the stay safer at home order, uh, we did a lot of things like investing in the Door County Medical Center uh, with uh, COVID-19 testing and some of their pre preparation work. 
we put a lot of energy and effort into food issues because uh, it's a really easy way to get money in people's pockets because if you don't have to buy a meal with a dollar, that's a dollar you can use to pay for other expenses. Surprisingly, we dealt a lot with technology. Uh, a good example of this was uh, 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 help of Door County. Uh, people being out of work and being forced to stay at home if you've already got family issues and uh, 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 concerns about domestic violence, uh, it wasn't surprised to see that those rates went up dramatically during that period of time. The problem is lots of charities in our community work on shoestring budgets and they don't have the means to be able to invest in the latest technology. So we had to invest in technology to allow their staffs to work remotely so they continue to meet the need that was ever growing during that period. Uh, we're now in the second priority of our, of our project, which are people who are struggling right now. And we've had to do a lot of things to create programs and activities that often exist in other communities but don't exist in ours. A good example of that was uh, how we worked with our friends at the United Way to create the Door County Food Pantry Coalition. Uh, we have pantries, but they tended to not work together in a real coordinated way. Uh, so by creating this coalition, by raising money together as a coalition, by purchasing things together, uh, but we actually even went so far as we, we bought them a truck to move uh, uh, items between the pantries so we can be more efficient about how we deploy those resources. Uh, you can go to feeddoorcounty.org to learn more about that. Um, we, we went out to find and create a rental assistance program because the thought was that we we're gonna be dealing with people who were soon become homeless by the lack of resources. Uh, uh, no such program really existed in the county. So we had to find a charity and create a program from scratch. So now if you go to rentrelief.doorcounty.org, uh, rent you can apply for rental assistance. But realistically, in many ways, we're kind of in a lull. And when you talk about where we're gonna be going next, you know, our pantries are busy, uh, but the shelves are still stocked. We're doing okay, keeping up with the need. Uh, the rental assistance program is pushing money out, but it's not being overwhelmed. But that's really because we know that there are a number of things that are going on right now. We suspect that other things are on the horizon very soon. We know, for example, that moratoriums on evictions were in place, which have recently expired. We know that the additional food share dollars, you know, food share is our version of Wisconsin of SNAP, uh, which is the old food stamp program. Uh, additional food share dollars are beginning to phase out and return to the baselines assistance. Uh, unemployment insurance that is available for the so-called gig worker or the person that we all know in Door County that doesn't have one full-time job but has multiple part-time jobs. They don't traditionally qualify for unemployment. They do now. That expires here at the end of the month. The additional enhanced unemployment benefit, which has been carrying people forward, uh, uh, sustaining a lot of families this period, will be expiring at the end of the month. So we recognize that there probably is gonna be a pretty uh, significant increase in demand here in the com coming months. But we also suspect that there's another problem brewing. Door County is busy and we all see the traffic out there, but we also know that it's not busy enough. Now, my daughters, I have one daughter in high school who works at Grumpy serving ice cream. I'm perfectly content with them being only half as busy as they usually are. I have another daughter who's gonna go off to college, hopefully this fall. Uh, who's cleaning rooms for Airbnbs, and, and I'm perfectly fine her not being as it's good for us as a safety perspective to not be too busy. But the problem is that's going to be a, a stresses for our people coming into the future. Uh, I, I can best summarize it as one tavern owner put it out to me. Uh, this lady said that, you know, my guys right now are doing fine. They're working 35 or 40 hours a week, but they should be working 50 or 60 hours a week. They have enough money to live off of right now because they're seeing that income because the people are here, but they're not gonna have the savings they need come mid-October and the leaves drop and the county empties out. And the jobs that they have right now completely disappear and they're not gonna have the savings they need to carry them into spring. And that's really what we're preparing for is a dramatic increase in basic needs, largely driven by housing and by food that are gonna come up as the weather begins to turn cold. And we have to have a plan to sustain that into the 2021 season. You know, a lot of communities are opening up and they're, they're beginning to see business return slowly. We can't do that in Door County. We have, we go from sitting on a couch to a full-blown sprint during our season back to sitting on a couch. 
And so if we miss the sprint, which we're supposed to be in right now, and we're at a pretty good jog, but we're not sprinting like we should be financially. And again, I don't want to say that that's a good, it's a good thing that we're not overwhelmed because that would be bad for our community from a health perspective, but it does create stresses for us that we're going to feel come uh, in, the, in the cold months. And that's really what we're working on. And that's where we appreciate uh, your generosity to make that go. Now, I know that I'm, my 10 minutes are up and, and Anne's going to loop me away, but can I add one more thing that I just want to share with why I think that you guys are so terrific? You know, um, the 100 Women Who Care are having an impact, but I don't know sometimes that you realize that your impact goes far beyond the checks that you write. You know, one of the most common, I mean, I, I look at the list of people who are on this call right now, and I come across many of you in others contexts and I talk to you and, and I hear about uh, the most common refrain I hear from you after one of your meetings is, you know, so-and-so presented last week and I didn't know they did that. You know, I didn't know they did that. That's such a common refrain but from the members of your group. And I would argue that that's the greatest thing that you do. You bring people together who care deeply about Door County and you are connecting them to the charities that are making Door County stronger. You know, as, as a group, you've given away tens of thousands of dollars, maybe more than 100,000 probably by, by this point. If you're not there, you're gonna get there pretty darn quick. But that's likely only a sh small fraction of your true impact. What's far more difficult to measure is the number of dollars that you give as individual people because you got excited about what you heard uh, at that meeting that month. Or the amount of time that you donate because you step up and you go, you go forward and you volunteer because you see the great things that are going on. You know, the 100 women who care aren't just collecting $100 at a time. You're inspiring and you're training the next generation of philanthropists in Door County. And that's why we at the Community Foundation are so excited and honored to provide the financial infrastructure we do for your group. Because collectively and individually, you are making a real difference in Door County. And for that, you have our deepest gratitude and thanks. And with that, that was only 12 minutes, Anne, so I'll stop talking now. Oh my gosh, Brett. So now you brought tears to my eyes. That was like, thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Um, thank you for all the updates and thank you for all you do. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. Okay, I'm going to get back to our presentation. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do a little business update. And first of all, I wanted, we wanted to share with you our board members. So we have Ann Glesner, uh, who is administering the nonprofits from uh, everything to do with nonprofits. So thank you, Ann. Uh, Jane Susie is our legal counsel and uh, has been a great asset to the board with all the advice and direction she's given. And Gloria, who we heard from a little bit ago for the auxiliary, she um, is, um, is leading the meetings, um, all the organization of the meetings, and she's taken on the membership administration and has amazing organizational skills. Thank you so much, Gloria. And myself, Ann Morgan, I um, manage the website, donations, finance, and administration. And in our recap email, we'll include um, contact uh, phone numbers or cells or whatever, so that if you have any questions, feel free to contact any of us. We welcome your questions and suggestions. Oh, buttons. This is my, <laughs> everybody's laughing at me at my slot, my button slide. So this is on our website and three important buttons. One is the join us. So if you know somebody interested that you can e tell them easily our website and just hit the join us button. And that'll give, take them to everything that they need to know and do to join us. Um, I wanted to share, we have, over the weekend, we had somebody join us. And so we're up to 309 members. Our award is over 19,500. I'll know for sure after the reconciliation and everything, but that's almost $20,000 a quarter, almost $80,000 a year. So amazing, very good. And um, thank you for all your referrals. I can't say that enough because that's the primary way we grow. So appreciate that. Uh, the next button is the nominate a nonprofit, and it's really easy. 
you click on that, you enter your contact information, the nonprofit contact information, their website, and there's also an option to de delegate a speaker. Um, we like to all be there to support our members and, um, you know, be brave and present. But, you know, if it's not your thing, don't let it prevent you from nominating nonprofits. You know, find somebody else who is as passionate as you are about the organization and delegate them to do the speaking for you. Um, main thing is we get nominations and, you know, get the money out to people. And then the la uh, last button is the donate button. And that will take you directly to the foundation's link for to make a credit card payment. It goes directly to our um, our fund. And there's also a little box you can check. So a lot of people have taken advantage of that so that they enter their information. And with that box checked, every 20th, the 20th of the month of our quarterly meeting, their credit card is charged for their donation amount. And it just makes it easy. So you don't have to remember to uh, make the payment. So, um, you know, other ways that people have added to our award, I just want to share this with you. Some people, there's a handful of people who have a corporate match program where they work. And so that is great. So if you have that available to you where you work, please consider submitting your donation to get the match. Um, sometimes people are inspired um, at a particular meeting for a nonprofit and want to give additional amounts. That's totally fine. You know, we welcome that. That's awesome. We had um, one member I wanted to share with you. She wanted to do more and um, decided to make a donation of $1,000 to be distributed for over a year. So $250 is added for four meetings to increase the award. So that was cool. And um, one last story I want to share with you. My, um, my sister wanted to do something for me. She wanted to thank me for something I'd done. And I was like, you know, you don't have to do anything. No problem. Don't worry about it. And, but she insisted and she's, and I was like, whatever you want to do is fine. She said, well, how about if I donate to the hundred plus women who care? I was like, oh yes, she loves Door County. It made me so happy. And you know, it increases our award. So all sorts of creative ways, you know, when you guys, when we all share the story of what a hundred who, women who care does, and um, your personal story, how you got involved, it inspires people, but inspires new philanthropists or people to increase their philanthropy. So keep up the good work. And visit our website, uh, lots of information there, direct other people to it. Um, questions, please let me know. Suggestions, welcome those as well. So on to tonight's awards. So the main award is $10,000 and the runners up will be about 4,500 each. Okay, drum roll. The main award goes to Northern Door Children's Center. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you and thankful for all you do. Um, great work. And we also want to thank or uh, congratulate the runner ups um, Third Avenue Playhouse and Northern Sky Theater. They will receive around $4,500. So um, congratulations to all of you. And a reminder to our members, um, please submit one payment per team. Uh, checks can be written out to 100 plus WWC and mailed to the foundation or dropped off. Um, online, you can go to that donate link, make your payment that way with your credit card as well. Um, okay, so we are on to the drawing, and my daughter's here. <laughs> She's going to help me. Ann Glesner got the names together. We checked over the names and put them in the hat. And okay, our first one is here we go. All right, first one Open Door Bird Sanctuary. All right, congratulations, Open Door. Second one. Friends of Peninsula Park. All right, congratulations, Friends of Peninsula Park. And last one, Adopt a Soldier. All right, thank you, Natalie. All right, congratulations, Adopt a Soldier. So those will be the three presentations for our next quarterly meeting. Congratulations to all of you. 
So Brad, to your point, um, we have since inception raised over $138,000 after this meeting. So we, you know, coming together, we are making a difference. Good job, everybody. Um, I wanted to share with you, there's what we call the Alliance that is kind of bringing together all the 100 Who Care organizations and trying to provide resources, um, get some data together. And they were asking people to submit how much they had donated since inception. So there's about 700 organizations that um, are working with them. And the last email I got, 66 had reported. And since inception, 66 chapters had raised over $15 million. And we are now a part of that. And it's just, it's, you guys, it's amazing. So thank you for all you're doing. So our next meeting is October 26th. Um, we'll keep track of the COVID situation and let you know what we'll be doing on that. Um, let's see. And on the behalf of the board of directors, we want to give a big thank you to all of the women who have referred others. Keep up the good work. And a big thank you to everyone. Um, you know, coming together, supporting our local Door County community, it's wonderful. And you are doing a great job. Um, yeah, keep up the good work and stay well. We'll end on a quote from Margaret Mead. A small group of thoughtful people could change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. All right, everybody, stay well, take care, and bye for now.